Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sam Robbins and I'm continuing with my video series about vitamin D and how awesome it is in today's topic. And question is, how much vitamin D should I take daily? Now, if you've watched my previous videos, do you know how incredible I think vitamin D is? In fact, it's not even a vitamin. Technically, it's a hormone and more specifically, a steroid hormone. And yes, this is why it's so powerful and so essential for your health, fitness, and longevity. So the next question is, great, how much vitamin D should I take? Unfortunately, I can't give you a specific dose and I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, before you can decide how much vitamin D to take, you need to know what your levels are, where you're starting from. And the best and most accurate way to do this is honestly just to get a blood test and measure your 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. Now, then you'll know exactly where your levels are and then if you're deficient or low or suboptimal or optimal and so forth and then dose accordingly. Now, as I've stated in my previous videos, I believe that the ideal range for optimal health should be between uh, 50 to 75 nanograms per milliliter for vitamin D. And I think 35 to 40 is the lowest it should be. So again, 50 to 75 would be great. Now, the problem is that you can't just take a specific dose of vitamin D and hope you'll get to this optimal level. And this is because there's so many factors that control absorption and, and, and conversions in your body. Remember, vitamin D is a hormone, and because of that, just like other hormones, we all react differently. There's lots of factors that affect it, like other hormones, your age, uh, male or female, your sex, your body fat levels, your skin color, your cholesterol levels, and so on and so forth, and yes, genetics. For example, my mom, even though she's in her mid-80s and gets no sunlight, gets much better absorption of vitamin D than I do. For example, for her, 5,000 units of vitamin D3 works better and shows higher levels in the blood, around 65 to 70 nanograms per milliliter. Sadly, I have to take double that dose at 10,000 units for my levels to maybe get around 50. And I have zero idea why, other than the fact it's just her genetics. And I even get daily sunlight, my mom doesn't. This is why obviously taking a blood test is so important, but I get the fact that most of us aren't going to be able to get a blood test to know. Now, another major problem with taking vitamin D or anything is the delivery mechanism and hence absorption. Now, most vitamin D is in an oil-based gel caplet. It's made from the bodily fluids of secreted by sheep's gland and wool. Yeah, right? It's, this is why most companies use it because mainly it's cheap and it's not nearly as good or as safe as the plant-based, organic, wild harvested version that's micro-encapsulated, which actually results two times more in better absorbability and bioavailability and it's fresher than the typical cheaper, quote unquote, you know, the oil-based versions that 99% of other companies use, which I used to use in the old days. Additionally, you need to take the correct form of vitamin D, which is D3, not regular D or D2, which is found, again, in most cheap supplements and multivitamins. This is why you always have to read the labels. Also, vitamin D3 works directly and in synergy with vitamin K2, more specifically the MK7 version. Together, they help optimize both absorbability and safety so you can maximize the benefits while reducing any potential negatives. Also, don't take regular K or K1 or even synthetic K3. It must be the natural K2, specifically the MK7. So here's the bottom line. Take the plant-based organic wild harvested version that's micro-encapsulated for two times better absorption and bioavailability, not the gel caplets. Also, don't take either of these vitamins um, by themselves, all right? Take the D3 and K2 forms together in one pill at the same time, preferably in the morning with food. Now, listen carefully. When I made these changes, again, after learning from all my mistakes and what I'm here to teach you to learn from my mistakes, is when I made these changes, my vitamin D levels from went from around 40 to 50 nanograms per milliliter at 10,000 units of vitamin D to 50 to 60 at half the dose at only 5,000 units. Basically, I took less, got better absorbed, have better results because I started taking the correct form, combination, and delivery mechanism. 
This saves me money, and of course, it's a lot safer in the long run as well. With that said, whether you do a blood test or not, most of us won't be able to. I typically suggest people to take about 5,000 units of D3, which is 125 mics, plus 50 micrograms of K2, the MK7 version, in the morning with the meal together. Again, below this video in the description area, I've listed the best supplement that my family and I take, which utilizes both of these at the correct dosage, the correct form, and the ratios of the clinically researched versions of these two vitamins. Again, learn from my mistakes. It's called Perfect Vitamin DK. Best part is all you need to take is one small capsule daily. It does it all, saving you time and money. It'll literally cost you around a quarter a day, 25 cents, to get the most potent and clinically validated forms of these two vitamins, D3 and K2. So there you have it. Scroll down, take a look at it below this video in the description area. Also, leave your comments and questions below. What did you learn today? What questions do you have? What can I give you more clarity about in future videos? Now, if you found this helpful, please subscribe. Click that notification icon so you'll, you'll be notified when similar videos are released. And as always, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, and I wish you a very happy and healthy day.